Welcome back to another exciting episode of Cyber Defense TV. I'm your host, Gary Malevsky, and the publisher of Cyber Defense Magazine. Sitting in my hot seat today is a really special guest. It's Sridhar, who is the Vice President of Managed Services, Cloud Hosting, and Security at an incredible company of which 28 to 30% of all internet traffic flows through Tata Communications, part of the Tata Group. Sridhar, welcome to the hot seat today. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity, Gary. So you've got a really challenging role, and I'm curious if you could describe some of the services you offer and if it's in build, you know, build it yourself, uh, commercial off the shelf, or you partner with other cybersecurity providers and how you uh, roll out your offerings. Is it to SMBs or large enterprises? Love to dive into Tata Communications. So Tata Communications has got a wide portfolio of uh, solutions starting from our traditional networking and bandwidth and connectivity all the way up to cloud and security services. Uh, on the way, we have the uh, convergence and IoT solutions as well. So it's a vast portfolio and we a digital ecosystems enabler, allowing the customers to move onto the digital platforms. And our thrust has been largely in creating a more of a platform story. It's, it's manifests itself in all the products that we have launched. From a security closer home on a security product portfolio, our lead obviously is the platform that we've developed for our cloud SOC uh, services for our customers. Besides this, we also have a, a portfolio which, which encompasses everything from a simple firewall to all the way up to managing the complete threat and defense requirements of our customers. And this includes partnerships with various leading providers. You can name most of them and, and they would be our partners. We would be working with them, carrying their IP, but wrapping it around with a host of services solutions that we have. And we've got a, a 300 plus uh, certified engineer uh, base that we've got. And we have a primary operation center, which is in Chennai, which is in South of India. And we've got a BCP from Pune, which is in the West of India, from a different seismic zone. So we cater to customers requirement across different uh, geographies with the follow the Santa model, where we're able to cater to our customer requirements. This is your uh, 20th anniversary. You started out as yes. an ISP. You're one of the largest in the globe. And again, a lot of traffic flows through you. There must be tons of attacks. Are you rolling out these cloud and security offerings for small to medium-sized businesses, or does it go all the way up to big business and big government enterprise? We, we cover pretty much the entire spectrum of customers, starting from the largest government and public sector undertakings to very large enterprises, the mid-market customers to the commercial enterprises. So the wide spectrum, we've got a range of solutions, which could be some of them we've created them in a sort of a shrink wrap manner. For example, I could go to a customer with maybe a DDoS solution or maybe a two-factor authentication solution, or I could go with a cloud SOC solution, which is a, a shrink wrapped and easy to, easy to implement in a short notice. Plus at the same time, the bespoke solutions of the large customers obviously will require a completely different address. And so we've got uh, both varieties available. What kind of threats are you defending against lately? I've heard a lot about ransomware. I've heard a lot about business email compromise, identity attacks. What, what kind of stuff are you seeing that you find intriguing to share with our viewers and listeners? Okay, I'll put it this way. When I talk to any customer, there's a, the digital transformation, the digital journey is in various stages of evolution. And uh, I would think it all starts with an idea, as they say. And for us, the idea means something different. I for identity, V for data, E for endpoints and A for applications. So first is to ensure this whole spectrum is completely, so we talk about you know, comprom no compromise on the identity, what sort of solutions do we need there? How do you provide them the right kind of identity and access management solutions, the privileged access solutions, or, or anything related to, for example, identity compromises, how do you ensure their, their posture management is completely managed, et cetera. And then data, data at rest in use and data being uh, saved. So all the data uh, in flight, all of them have to be looked at. And then when we look at the endpoints, with the work from home phenomenon, everybody is, is engaging from pretty much anywhere. So the endpoint device and the endpoint from where the person accesses is becoming a very important criteria. And even a router at my home could become a point of compromise. So looking at that and then looking at how are we protecting the applications. So pretty much this then moving into the threat portfolio, the, the threat intelligence, the threat hunting, how do we provide the right kind of threat vector analysis to the customers? And in the event, like you talked about, in the event of a zero day vulnerability, how are they able to remediate in the shortest possible time? And how do we understand and factor that into our planning for subsequent and building the use cases on it? And reduction of the false positives, which is one of the most important things because we need to understand how to correlate and contextualize the customer threats. And then in the event of being able to handle so much of data logs, then naturally you need to bring in the AI and automation analytics techniques. So whether it is the user entity, whether it is the endpoint, so 
uh, there are logs coming from various different sources, but how do you first sift through all of them? How do you put them all into one place? Because the days of eyeballing the incident and being able to act on them is over, being able to bring the right kind of AI and automation techniques. And lastly, how do you put it all into the right kind of governance and compliance framework so that we are able to give the visibility, the right kind of governance and operating model and the compliances as required for the customer. So this is how we look at it. And so network security in, in all its manifestations, cloud security, and the threat portfolio. These are probably, I would say, the three important vectors and capping it all will be the governance and risk and compliance. I love your acronym IDEA. That was very good, I-D-E-A. Can you share that with our viewers and listeners one more time? Sure. I, everything starts with an idea. Identity, data, endpoints, and applications. And then you tag them. Threat, AI automation, governance. That's fantastic. And with the, as you said, the work from home dilemma, I think the VPNs are being overtaxed. So we've got the BYOD is, you know, not moving. The device is not coming in for hygiene tests on site. So you've got to deal with this remotely. I'm assuming a lot of people are using their own devices that, that normally uh, you don't control. Do you provide an endpoint agent that you've developed or do you use third party or do your clients tell you this is the agent we, we might need some help managing? We use our own IP primarily in the network traffic analysis and the DDoS management with respect to endpoints, with respect to even our SIM tools, et cetera. We work with the leading vendors. For example, our platform on CloudSoc is on Logarithm as it's, a, it's an integrated SIM SOAR UEBA platform and it is in the Gartner Magic Quadrant for several years running, eight years on last count. And, and uh, we work with the likes of Trend Micro and the others. We, we pretty much work with full stack providers so that the better together story comes into play. And we are able to bring the, the economies of scale and the right, uh, right kind of solutions to the customer. And more importantly, you know, it provides for scaling because as customers consume more and more resources from the cloud, I think the, the time when you can sit down and plan for a, a time out in the future is over. It's all right here and now. So for us to be able to develop the platform and allow the customer to scale is becoming the most important uh, aspect in our, in our solution to the customer. And you mentioned VPN, I remember we talked about it. I think the days of trust and verify are long over. It's only zero trust and you know, there's no trust anymore. You no just trust. Have to... Onboarding to zero trust, you want to make that, yeah. I assume, a frictionless experience. That's right. That's right. And, and that's a place where we have our own internet gateway solutions as well. That's our own IP and we are prop propagating that. So uh, like a web gateway, like customer uh, solutions around this area, that's another thing that we've developed our IP on. That's great. Do you also, are you also a cert authority as an ISP yes. or do you, you, you do your own yes. SSL certs or TLS? Yes, we are empaneled with the, with certain, which is the Indian central body. And we perform vulnerability assessment for various government bodies. And we are, since then we are an empaneled vendor, it becomes easy for someone to select us. That's excellent. Now you said you have a team of uh, around 300 people working on, on the cybersecurity side. Are, any of your team members doing finding indicators of compromise and taking apart some of the latest malware and do you publish any of your findings? So there's a lot of work that we do with respect to engaging with a lot of international bodies, whether it is the OEM sources or whether it is some of these centralized bodies or whether it is our own, we've got various scrubbing farms across the globe and we've got more than 25 million net flow data every minute. Now that provides us immense amount of data which we can actually go through and we would be able to understand what is the nature of a you know, triangulation, you know, triaging all this information is something that our people do. We've got multiple scrubbing farms across the globe. So from the point closest to where the attack happens, we, we would be able to do the network traffic analysis and separate what is relevant traffic for the customer and move the remaining out. You know, that's an exercise that we do. So there are some things that we do on our own and, and we have established practices. And there are certain things where we leverage some of the learnings from uh, other sources. That's wonderful. And again, if I were visiting tatacommunications.com, would I find more about all of your products and service offerings? Yes. And, and uh, again, yes. do, do you publish any reports or any threat findings uh, that you, uh, other than working with international bodies, do you, do you share any information or white papers on some of these subject matters on cloud and hosting and security? So there are three things that we do. So first is, as and when any of these international advisories are available, there is a method by which we put all of them together into one simple advisory to the customers and we send it across. Second is, we also provide specific, for example, if there is something related, like for example, a log4j vulnerability, it's related to BFSI industry in particular. So we look at what is the kind of advisory, what is the kind of support that we need to provide to them for that industry-specific addressing. That's the second thing. 
The third one is if we observe any traffic pertaining to a certain customers, not only do we address the requirement of that particular customer, but to similar such industries, we try to abstract it a little bit. First of all, observe if there is any sort of such kind of a suspicious, suspicious traffic that's hitting that, that customer, the other customers in that similar industry, and we provide them advisories, not just providing advisories, we also act on some of them to be able to provide the right kind of defense for such customers. So it happens in, in all these manners. So that's, the, that's one part of the question that you answered. On the other one, our people, we have a robust engineering organization. This team works at, at the tertiary levels of engagement with various OEMs. So what happens is certain advanced information comes to us and we try to capsulize that and provide the information to our customers in terms of contextualizing it for that particular customer or that particular category. And we also share such advisories based on our insights from our backend organization. That's fantastic. And you named a few of the vendors you work with. I know one of them uh, has, uh, they have patents on artificial intelligence, I think over 12 years old, Trend Micro, they've been one step ahead of the latest threats is one of the, a lot of people don't know, they're probably the second largest cybersecurity software company in the world. And uh, they make incredible endpoint and other technology. Uh, their CEO is actually one of our winners of uh, top women in cyber. Oh, so great. Uh, shout out to your choice of uh, partners there. That's wonderful. Yeah, that's wonderful. Thank you. And do you, with the data that you, I assume you have data lakes of t just tons of data flowing daily yes. that, that you're analyzing. Can you share a little bit? The volume must be tremendous. Oh, like I said, there's about 25 million of net flow data that hits us every day. So there is a data collector and then there's, there's the data lake and then the data analyzer and then the protector. So we've got four modules into our own uh, solution framework and it, they work in unison. And this data that comes through is processed, scrubbed and analyzed and advanced uh, analysis is being done so that if there is any, if there is any malicious uh, uh, traffic identified, then we try and build proactive defense for, for not just the, the, the customer who has been impacted, but for other uh, similar such customers as well. So we pick up the learnings from there in advance. That's incredible. And what an innovative managed service provider you are. It's just incredible some of the things you're up to. Again, I think our viewers and listeners will learn a lot by visiting tatacommunications.com. And Sridhar, Vice President of Managed Services, Cloud Hosting and Security, did we miss anything? Is there anything else you want to share with our viewers and listeners? Okay, it's a constantly evolving journey, as you so it's never a destination. So as we keep moving, we pick up a lot of learnings and we share with customers. And one of the biggest challenges that the customers face today is the manpower. Because technology is going at such a rapid pace that the resources is always going to play catch up with technology. So it's just that we are here to try and bridge the gap. And we have made the transition from being a managed security service provider to becoming a more of a integrated MDR player. And now we're taking baby steps and graduating towards becoming a more robust XDR player. So I think the evolution is also going fast at the pace at which the market demands. And we do provide such services to our customers. And with the, with the support of our customers, we are, we are where we are. So we look forward to being uh, of continuous uh, engagement and value to our customers and, and try and reduce their false positives, positives and give them the right kind of defense. That's a fantastic answer. Again, Sridhar, you are the Vice President of Managed Service, Cloud Hosting and Security at Tata Communications. As you said, 20 year anniversary, starting out as a great ISP, working into managed services, managed cybersecurity services, working your way up to, as you said, MDR and graduating to XDR to make your customers safe and secure and help them comply with regulations at the same time. What a wonderful Absolutely. company. Great interview. I really enjoyed this hot seat. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity, Gary. It was great talking to you. Sweetheart, thanks for coming. And folks, go to his website, tatacommunications.com, and then come back next time for another exciting episode of Cyber Defense TV. Cyber Defense TV and Cyber Defense Radio have launched 24 by 7 by 365 live streams. Visit them online today at cyberdefense.tv and cyberdefense.radio with your host and globally recognized cybersecurity expert and my good friend, Gary Malewski.